everyone's uh, refresher. Um, as far as the uh, 60 and uh, rapidly growing 72 cell uh, mount options, um, we do have our uh, our top of pole mounts, the uh, the two tier ground mounts, um, our vertical uh, vertical roof mount systems, the ballasted systems, and of course the uh, the flush mount. I'll just briefly go over a couple of key points in each of those um, uh, right now. Um, first off, the uh, top of pole mounts. These uh, uh, these mounts we've designed for between one and uh, currently six uh, of your 60 or 72 cell modules. Um, the, some of the added benefits to these uh, mounts particularly are the either all aluminum construction or in the larger systems it's the galvanized uh, pivot beams and collars. Um, great for your remote locations where you're worried about, uh, worried about rust and oxidizing. Um, Added perks: the panel rails for the larger mounts, of course, are the uh, the fast track HD rails, uh, which give us plenty of strength for the uh, the longer spans, uh, which which helps us get to the uh, the six uh, six module mounts. Um, and hopefully, coming soon, it would be uh, will be your larger uh, your larger systems. Uh, one of the benefits, of course, with the six module mounts is they're designed uh, predominantly or focused on the off grid type systems. Um, and they string very well for uh, for most of your charge controllers. Um, over the last couple of years, we've had some questions with, from our customers regarding regarding proper ballasting of these systems and proper foundations. And so, what we have done, and it is available through uh, through your sales reps, is a brief document regarding the uh, the size of the the area of the modules that you're going to be using, um, and then of course the pole that's necessary for the for that particular mount. And of course, the uh, the penetrate in the ground based on the height of the mount above ground. Um, again, contact uh, your sales rep, and they can provide you with a copy of this. Uh, should it be something that is interesting or necessary for you? Um, something that uh, that we've been working on, and of course, uh, developments as of uh, as of late summer, um, early fall, was an update to our two tier ground mount. Uh, where we've gone to a uh, a bit more of a well more modular design uh, which allows uh, allows our our customers to expand their systems for for your not just your eight panel systems but up to your 20 panel systems and larger if necessary um, we uh, yeah, currently have both a 60 and a 70 cell version available um, and we are working actually to make a universal mount that will work on both those. And I'll touch base on that one a little bit later on in this presentation. Um, continuing on with the the two tier ground mounts, um, we have uh, been working over the last little while put, to put together some foundation guidelines. Uh, these include, of course, your uh, your poured foundations for the you know, sauna tube um, um, or concrete piers as well as um, for ballasted systems where people are looking at putting in a, either a poured concrete block um, or even the, uh, the concrete uh, Lego blocks that are readily available from all of your concrete uh, suppliers. So you can source them locally without having to, uh, to pay, hopefully, large, hopefully not have to pay large shipping costs. Um, onwards from the, uh, the, the ground mounts, of course, we start looking at the roof mounts, um, starting with, the, with our ballasted systems. Um, these are, of course, gaining more and more popularity as uh, as buildings, uh, modern architecture goes to some more flat roofs, or when you start looking at larger um, uh, commercial scale buildings um, or warehouses that and the sort. Um, with that, um, what we have available to uh, to help our installers, of course, is the uh, the simplified ballasted layouts. Um, these are available. Uh, that for the for an unstamped version, uh, these are available free of charge when your orders are placed. Uh, we don't want to start working on putting ballasted layouts together when people are still in the quoting phase. Um, but once we do actually have systems that are that are progressing into our system, then we'll start working on getting um, unstamped ballasted layouts uh, to give you an indication of how many ballast blocks you're going to be looking for. Uh, side note on that one: typically for quick quote, quoting purposes. Um, if you are trying to figure out an estimate on the ballast blocks you'd be uh, you'd be looking at installing, we typically recommend uh, three of the 33 pound blocks um, per foot. Again, just for quoting purposes, to give you an idea of what your costs and uh, and uh, install times can be like. Um, 
after the system, uh, after we've provi after the simplified layout has been provided, um, uh, of most most municipalities are going to want or require a stamped ballast plan. Uh, we do have the ability to get you those stamped ballast plans. Uh, talk to your uh, your sales rep regarding the uh, the cost to get the uh, the stamped ballast plan based on the province you're in. Um, for that, of course, for both the simplified and the stamped, we will need the uh, the intake form uh, sign uh, filled out. It's a really simple one-page document just regarding the physical location of the building, the roof type, um, and your idea as far as what you expect to have up there in uh, in terms of module count. Um, yeah. On that, um, yeah, ballasted mounts, uh, they are great. There's a, a nice uh, uh, growing market for them, which is fantastic to see, uh, see that develop. Uh, continuing on, the vertical roof mounts, um, we're seeing more of these in either off-grid type applications or in in uh, <clears throat> pardon me, or in flat roofs where uh, potentially installers want uh, want a higher tilt angle from their modules, and um, <clears throat> pardon me, one second here. Uh, yeah, wanting a higher tilt angle and are willing to install sleepers up on the roofs. Added benefit of the uh, the higher tilt angle, of course, is a slight, is an increase in production. Um, and these mounts are quite easy and quick to install. Um, using since they're based on the fast drag rail, uh, also gives you the module uh, modular uh, ability to expand the system easily to accommodate however many modules you require. Uh, continuing on the flush roof systems, these uh, obviously are the the lion's share of. Uh, of the residential grid tie systems, and of course, uh, quite a quite a number of them going into um, our off grid off grid cottages when people are looking at uh, getting a little bit more robust of a system. The um, as far as the components we have available, of course, we have our ultra our UL rail, uh, which is designed more on the residential scale, particularly hoping expecting 42 48 inch on center maximum spans. Um, again, lightweight, easy to install, perfect for the residential. Uh, we also have the HD rail, which is uh, which is was our original rail, the more robust design, and originally designed for spans of, of 64 um, inches. And in some cases, we've actually been able to expand a little bit farther than that, um, based on local snow and wind loading conditions. Um, but we do have those two rails still available, and uh, and for the necessary applications that. Uh, uh, that may come up. With that, um, as far as support that HES is ha is, has available to to help um, help with your with your projects, of course, is the simplified layouts. Uh, these also are available uh, when you're when you place your order with your sales rep. Um, we have an intake form which has now been produced and it's available. Uh, again, you can obtain them through your sales rep. It is um, a simplified form, a little bit of site information. Um, some of the roof, what type of roof uh, it is, whether it's an asphalt shingle, um, corrugated metal standing seam, and what have you, and your ex your idea, your your estimate on the layout. Um, when we get that intake form, what we'll be doing is be turning around and supplying a, uh, a simplified layout, as you see up on the right hand side here, uh, giving the overall footprint of the array, uh, which uh, as well as a detailed view of the particular Roof penetration that uh, that you have specified, and the uh, the components of the fast track system. Uh, these uh, this simplified layout, uh, we've actually found a lot of times uh, municipalities when they're looking for some basic engineering information, these satisfy most of the requests. Uh, but I'll continue on. I'll discuss that further uh, further in this presentation uh, regarding uh, some of our developments that are coming in the near future. Uh, as far as uh, products that uh, have recently come on the market or are rapidly coming onto the market, I did want to touch base um, on our, our UL2 rail, uh, which is a, uh, a new rail design, um, and it's going to be compatible with all the current UL syst Ultra systems that are out there. Um, our Fast Track Talon, which we released back uh, early fall um, uh, for a roof penetration system, 
um, for holding your for non anchoring to the to the trusses. And then I was also going to touch base briefly on our new uh, standard flashing. So, as far as the UL2 goes, it is uh, it's simply it is a lighter version of the current fast track UL rail. Um, the uh, it, as I mentioned, it's compatible with all of our existing fast track systems. Um, the way we obtained that compatibility is the wetted perimeter of the rail or the outside surface is completely the same uh, geometry as um, as our previous UL rail. Um, what we have done is we have redesigned the inside of the rail um, to, to cut down material costs. Um, big benefit of that, of course, is with the lighter rail, the cost of, this, of the rail is reduced, uh, but we have, uh, have maintained the uh, the capabilities of it, so you're not sacrificing any por performance as far as uh, your spans um, or the durability of it. Um, our intention, of course, is to uh, phase this in um, as Q1 progresses here. Uh, it, it's 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 coming next. Is all is the the quick heads up for everybody. Um, all right, bear with me for a second here, guys. Pardon me. The, uh, the next one I want to talk about was, of course, the Fast Track Talon. Um, I've mentioned uh, earlier on in the presentation that we designed this as a, uh, a non-lag screwed shingle um, attachment point. Um, and what it's designed for is we, we've done all of our design and testing based on a 3 8 OSB or plywood roof, um, which is your building code's minimum roof thickness, uh, sheathing thickness. Um, so it is designed to withstand the, the the worst conditions that it's going to be subjected to. Um, we designed it. It is going. It secures to the to the uh, existing roof shingle and of course the sheathing, which is where we're actually biting into, um, using uh, metal screws, sheet metal screws, which because of the full thread they bite into the uh, the sheathing material, and and provide the anchor point. Um, this uh, added bonuses of this. You're not hunting for your trusses, which is going to help reduce your install time um, and allows you to uh, to work very well with uh, with smaller roof profiles where you may only get one or two uh, two panels in. Um, just makes the setup a lot easier for you. A um, nice benefit that we have of this is uh, not only is it a, a, a flashing for redirecting the water, um, it has the butyl, um, butyl membrane uh, between the base plate and the bottom of our flashing, uh, which prevents water from, from penetrating into the into the into where the penetrations are located. Additionally, we have another sealing element at each of our roof penetration points, um, which uh, again provides an additional layer of safety and security to keep water from from uh, from any water penetrations into the roof. Uh, as you can see from the image on the bottom left, the idea being, once the base plate is on, the flashing fits over top, and uh, we have a threaded rod sticking out the top, which your L foot would connect to, um, and then installation progresses from there. Uh, as far as uh, as far as the the product design, uh, we've done quite a substantial amount of in-house testing on this, and actually have sent the all of our testing results and uh, the design off for a third-party part, third party review. They've reviewed everything. Um, and we actually have uh, 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 structural engineers support and sign off on the design. Uh, this is available now. It's been on the market for about six months. It is growing in popularity. Um, I, I envision this being uh, more and more popular as uh, as installers look at uh, ways to to uh, increase their efficiency, uh, reduce uh, reduce time hunting for uh, for trusses, and uh, yeah, and of course uh, reduce cost. Uh, but last but not least of the new products that I wanted to discuss, this is um, this is going to be coming out later on in Q1. Um, it is a, a replacement to our traditional fast track flashing kit. Um, what the what we did is we ultimately decided uh, we wanted to come up with our with our own uh, own style of flashing, which will use a leg screw um, for the for the traditionalists and the people that enjoy that. Uh, that uh, have decided they want to screw, they want to anchor into existing legs, uh, trusses. Pardon me. Um, so we've come up with our own design. 
uh, we have uh, benefit of us being the, the manufacturer is of course the uh, the reduced cost. We're taking one uh, one rung out of the uh, the supply chain here, and um, so it's costing less. Therefore, uh, less ultimately lower price to your customers, easier to sell the systems. Um, the uh, the image in the bottom left here is uh, is a sample that recently arrived uh, for my testing purposes. Um, it uh, uh, is a bare, uh, it's a mill finish sample for the testing, um, but just a w heads up that this will come with a um, black anodized finish to it. Uh, these uh, these will be on the market uh, later on in Q1 as well. All right, I do seem to be going a little bit quickly through my presentation, so I will. Uh, uh, I will spend a little bit more time on uh, on what we have coming down the pipes. Um, the first one uh, that I wanted to discuss, of course, is our extended span ground mounts. Uh, right now, we have an we have a have an eight foot maximum span uh, in our ground mounts that uh, that are that we've we've we're supplying. Uh, what we've been doing is we are we are undergoing testing at uh, uh, on a on a ten foot span. Uh, the benefit of the 10-foot span is that we will be able to uh, one reduce number of foundations for for systems that are going to be uh, more than 10 panels wide. Uh, so if you're looking at a, a five kilowatt block of ground mount um, or greater, you're going to get away with less uh, less foundations, less either concrete blocks, less uh, piers. Um, and again, without sacrificing the performance of the mount. Um, additionally, these uh, these changes um, are going to include an update to the the front leg to make it compatible for both our 60 and 72 cell modules, as opposed to having two separate SKUs we want that, that we currently do, one for the 60 cell and one for the 72. Um, benefit of this, of course, is um, it's e easier for us to supply. Because we're only go we're going to be carrying less uh, less SKUs, um, so quicker quoting, quicker shipping times. Uh, these are expected out uh, again mid to late quarter quarter one. So within uh, hopefully late February is the is the goal. Um, similar to what we've been doing with the um, with the two tier ground mount, uh, is looking at uh, making a universal top of pole mount. Uh, which will work for both our 60 and 72 cell modules. Um, this has been a little bit more tricky just because we want to make sure that we are uh, we are clamping within the the manufacturer's specified locations for uh, for all the modules that we carry, um, while still making a mount that is uh, strong, robust, um, and of course, uh, and not overloading our rails as well on the cantilever. Uh, as these are designed. The intention is going to be for a uh, to have available on the market uh, TPM one, two, three, four, and six as we currently do, but it will be compatible again for both the 60 and 72 cell modules uh, because there is a number of uh, of individual mounts that make up this family of uh, of, uh, of systems. Uh, it will be later in Q1, early Q2 before we get the entire product line released. Uh, that's uh, that that's going to be a great one for. Um, your off-grid system people, particularly, um, and you, again, your more uh, your uh, more remote locations as well. Additionally, and I haven't noted it on here, but one of our intentions is to also look at um, a GM, uh, sorry, a TPM8 and a TPM9 for your uh, for your off-grid and uh, grid tie systems. Uh, these again, for for stringing purposes, work very well um, with your uh, the the eight and nine will be working well with your classic. Uh, classic charge controllers and your higher voltage charge controllers. Um, the one that seems to be uh, an, an ongoing uh, ongoing work and uh, and progress is constantly being made and we're always finding uh, finding new new questions that come up and new um, trying to find new solutions to those questions as they arise. Um, it's uh, so what we what we're working on is uh, is increasing our support uh, for local build for our installers um, in their workings with local building departments. 
uh, in this, we've found that there are generally three categories uh, of building departments out there. Uh, there are the ones that require no building permit or are quite happy with just the simplified layout um, and our component details. Um, as I was showing you earlier on in this presentation on our flush roof systems. They're happy with it. It's a quick, easy uh, easy layout for the uh, the building departments to, to look at. Be satisfied that uh, that uh, that the array is going to fit on the roof, and they're happy with the, the penetration detail. Uh, those usually go by quite quickly. Um, so those ones, simple, uh, simple, easy solutions um, that we can provide to, uh, to you as our installers to, again, provide onto your building departments. A little bit more involved is when we start getting the building departments that are looking for stamped layouts, um, uh, site plans, and or building de uh, component details. Um, usually when we are looking at a stamped layout, um, it's going to be a bit more site specific. They're going to want a little bit more details. And we do have the ability um, uh, to help with that. It's a little bit longer of a lead time, but we can still meet and meet those needs. Um, and we are working to better meet those needs in a shorter time span. So that, uh, again, the, the, the medium complexity ones, they're not, they're not uh, insurmountable by any means. Nor are the complex type systems insurmountable. They just usually end up requiring a little bit more legwork. Um, and we are working on putting together uh, document packages uh, for, our, um, for the departments, building departments that need that information. Um, and what we will, what we're working on is being able to provide to, uh, in these instances, uh, a stamped layout, um, specifics on the on the maximum spans, rail details, um, a site plan, and of course the SLDs that we uh, we have available. Um, so we do what we do. We are working to tidy up the uh, the support that we can offer for the for your building permits, um, and I definitely would uh, would welcome. Um, any any requests or questions that uh, that any of our installers um, have come across from their building departments, I'd, I'd welcome if you could send those to your to your sales reps and have them forward them on to me. It'd be great if I can uh, build a bit more of a bank as far as, uh, as topics that come up, and uh, we can work at uh, improving the service for those. Um, a little tidbit: um, we've got a uh, number of installers um, have been asking us to find a, an easier, better solution um, for our mid-clamps and particularly um, bonding modules to rails. Um, we've come across, um, the, currently we're using the, the stamped washer, uh, which fits underneath the modules. If you've installed any of our fast track systems, you're aware of this component. Um, it works just fine. Some people have just found that uh, the installation's a little bit finicky, trying to get that under both modules, length flat and working properly. With that in mind, and with that being an issue that has come up a couple of times, um, we are undergoing a design for a, a mid-clamp with an integrated bonding element um, that, uh, not showing up very well in this image, but on that black mid-clamp in the bottom right of the screen, uh, there is a, a, a PIM or tooth, um, which is a, it's a hardened PIM for uh, penetrating the, uh, the oxide layers on the outside of your modules much the same as the bonding washer is designed for penetrating that oxide on the underside of your module. Uh, with that with that design in progress, we are, um, once we have finalized the design of this portion of the clamp, we are going to be looking at getting it um, uh, through either a UL or ETL or combination of the both testing facility uh, to get them approved and, uh, and stamped, which, uh, which uh, hopefully will help uh, with any questions your electrical inspectors may have as far as the, um, the bonding require, bonding capabilities of the system. Because it's going to be going through some testing and is still under design, uh, we are looking at a delivery date of later in Q2, uh, just by the time we finish the design, get through six to eight weeks of testing and uh, get manufacturing process under. It's going to be, it's still a, it's still a while out, but we're hoping to get it um, uh, before summer rushes really happen for everyone. That uh, uh, again to to, uh, to to better make to improve your installation times um, and hopefully make your lives a little bit easier when you're up on on roofs or on installs. Um, now I 
have obviously gone a little quicker than I intended on this one, um, but it was a lot of information and I wanted to make sure I got it all out there. So I, I uh, at this point, I am done with the presentation side and I think I've heard Cameron typing away in the back um, behind me here and I think he's got some questions for me. And let's see what we can do to, uh, to address those as they come up. Hey Dan, thanks for uh, doing the presentation and absolutely we've got a bunch of questions here. Um, for anybody else who has other questions, please feel free to type them in and as they uh, come up, I will ask them on your behalf. Um, the first question is uh, in regards uh, to, can you discuss the foundation requirements slash guidelines during this presentation for a pole mount and conventional mounts? Also, do you offer a stamped engineer drawings for structure? Okay, uh, so I'll, I'll break that down into a, a couple of components here. The, um, as far as providing uh, actually, I'll get Cameron to repeat uh, the components of that question. Sure. Let's start with a. We'll go in two parts, as you said. Uh, can you discuss the foundation requirements slash guidelines uh, for pull mounts and conventional mounts? Yes. As far as the the guidelines for the for the uh, both our TPMs and our two tier ground mounts, uh, the for the concrete piers um, or poured concrete foundations, uh, the Ground mount uh, foundations. There is a set of, uh, of uh, sorry, bear with me for a second while I jump up to it. Let's make this a little easier for all of us. Um, they're based on uh, on uh, a standard soil condition um, and wind load. That's the, all of our tables are based on on um, on uh, specified uh, loading conditions. The and they are in included in the in the the guideline documents is the uh, soil, the soil conditions, the um, the density of concrete, or strength of the concrete. Sorry, and the uh, the the moment added by the height of the, in the case of our EPMs, our pole mount, um, or in the case of the ground mount, is the um, the guideline is based on. The, uh, the number of modules and the uh, the span of the racking. Um, as far and on that, both of those documents, the TPM um, guideline and the the ground mount ballast plans um, and foundation guideline are available uh, through your sales rep. Just at, send them an email. Most of your questions, I think, are going to be answered in there as far as the um, as far as the specifications go. Um, as far as stamped um, engineering drawings for the structure, I'm assuming you're referring to the structure of our ground mount and our and or the TPM. Um, the uh, as far as the stamped engineering for the structure of them, you would be able. We do not have them to provide as far as um, they are going to be dependent on local conditions. Um, so if it is a if it is a uh, set where uh, the, you need a stamp for the mount. It is going to be uh, something that you're going to have to find a local structural engineer um, or civil who will do a, an a site assessment um, and confirm the uh, confirm the both the the foundation and the and um, and the the system at that point. So unfortunately, not something we can provide, but we can help you uh, uh, tidy that uh, answer that. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, Next question, uh, is the talon suitable for metal roofs or is there a similar solution for metal roofs without drilling into the truss? As far as, um, as, far as a metal roof goes, it depends actually on the, uh, the type of metal roof you're referring to. Um, this, the talon is designed, of course, to work with the flashing and, of course, your flashing systems typically are being installed on, uh, on your shingle roofs um, where on our metal roofs, the corrugated metal, the standing seam metal, uh, those uh, those types of roofs we have, uh, of course, for the the corrugated metal roof, we have got the core slide, um, which would be the I guess the the closest example of of a, a short tooth uh, or short screw um, screw connecting to the rib profile of the corrugated metal roof. Um, so that would be a I guess an analogous uh, component. Um, for your standing seam roofs, of course, we're using the uh, the S5 clamps, which uh, clamp to the the seam profile versus the uh, 
versus having to penetrate. It's just a physical clamp onto the profile. And um, instances when you can't, when you have neither of those uh, available to you, um, we'd have to address that on a case by case. Um, and we can, and yet yeah, contact your sales rep and have them uh, and have them put you in touch with me, and we can chat further on what type of roof you're looking at. Good. Um, okay. Next question. Uh, will a 10 module, uh, I think this is in reference reference to the two tier ground mount version, be ready for spring of 2017? So with regards to a, a 10 module version of the uh, of the two tier ground mount for for coming up for this year's for this year this season, um, we are working on that, and I expect we should be able to have that uh, available for not just um, an 8 or a 10 or a 12, but also um, I guess almost a formulaic approach to to the mount, where our intention would be is to anything between an eight panel mount to uh, at least a 20 panel mount that we can uh, that we can provide a version uh, quick and quick and easily okay um, what non penetrating options do you have for standing rib metal roof uh, so with that uh, a standing rib metal roof uh, as far as rib is where we're going to have a have an issue because it, it and it's just purely going to be based on nomenclature. Um, we have standing seam roofs, which are the mechanically crimped um, roof profiles, and it uh, is it's exactly that. They're interlocking uh, ribs, uh, sorry, interlocking seams, and for those in, for those systems, um, we have a, a large number of uh, of the S5 clamps available. Uh, if you in a case like this, um, where there's obviously a misunderstanding between you and I, um, what I would ask is that um, if you can send uh, a picture of the the roof profile again to your sales rep, they will forward it on to me, and we can uh, we can find something specific. Um, in addition to the the picture of the roof, it also does help a lot if we can get uh, the manufacturer make and model, uh, just so we can do a little bit more research on our side versus versus a, a best guess uh, approach which uh, I, I'd prefer never to do. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully that answers your questions and definitely uh, um, yeah, send in the info to, uh, to, the, to your sales rep. Um, can tracking be installed in the TPM mounts? Uh, we, haven't, uh, we haven't put in any, any ability for tracking. This is, it does have the ability for a seasonable adjust, seasonal adjustment, um, but it, uh, it it isn't designed for tracking in any way, shape, or form. Um, the the cost and the moving parts usually we find uh, that the additional cost um, for maintaining and purchasing those parts defeats any purpose as far as the production you'd get from the system. Good. Um, and for the 10 module rack, how many uh, sono tubes will it require? Four or six? On that one, uh, we're, we're working on it. You, I, you've, I've got to give me a little bit of time to get that design finalized. Um, my expectation is that it would be um, for a 10 panel mount, and I would ask that you don't quote me on this, but um, I do believe we are looking at a um, uh, at four sono tubes. Again, let me finalize the design. And as soon as we have it available, we will uh, we will make it available to your sales reps. They will make it available to you as your projects as you as your as you question. Excellent. Well, Dan, thank you very much uh, for your presentation, uh, and to everybody who joined us today, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you in the future, and I uh, hope everyone has a great day. Unless you have any closing comments, Dan. Uh, again, just a thank you to everyone for attending. Um, appreciate your feedback, and I would any questions that you may have with regards to either um, your local municipalities, uh, any requirements that you've come across that uh, uh, that have thrown you for a bit of a loop. I'd love to I'd love to receive feedback on those questions so that we can better prepare. Um, and additionally, any um, and then any uh, additional uh, questions or comments that you um, 
you may have. Uh, definitely address them to yourselves, reps, and fire them off to me. Excellent. Thanks again, Dan, and thanks, everybody, for participating today. We look forward to hearing from you in the future. Take care. Bye.